of Impact Technologies. My guest, the CEO of Silverstein, Sandy Jacklow. Hello, right, my good man. To see you good again. to how see you. Been? It's been a while. I know it's, it's been, been a, a year. year. You and yet it? you still look cool. So how are you doing I, that? You know, the bright lights just don't work for <laughs> the light blue eyes. So we're trying. We're trying. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's been a crazy year. You know, it's hard to imagine. It's been a year. Yeah. When you think about the last keynote with Thornton May and Anat Yardi, they talked about the four impact technologies social media, big data, mobility, the cloud. And it's amazing over the year, not only have they been spot on with that, but they've started to converge in ways like we've never seen before. And those of us that have started to adapt and innovate with all of them coming together, are really starting to see the big success. So tell me about how you're seeing those come together in novel right. and new ways. Well, hey, let's start with mobility. First of all, you know, think about mobility. There are seven billion plus people in the world. 3.6 of them have mobile devices to over half the global population, right? Mm. So when you think about that, everything we do now has to have a mobile presence. It's not only your website, it's not only your social media, it's even applications. And one of the things that we're finding as we try and connect more with our tenants, our prospective tenants, our residents, even our employees, we're starting to build even apps. I mean, we have to be so fluid, we have to be dynamic, and it's kind of, you know, you remember back in the day Burger King's slogan, have it your way? Yeah. Well, we've almost become Burger King in technology where we literally have to have it when you want it, when you need it, how you want it, on your vice, whatever it is. And you know, just a couple weeks ago, it's changed one more time, the Apple Watch. Yep. Right, so I got you know new toy this year. Yeah. You know, we made fun of the, the Fitbit last year. That's right. But now we have to think about what's the platform? What do we look like? It's a small, you know, it's a small display, so our message has to change. We have to be more clear and concise in how we do things. So when you think about that, it kind of converges with social media. So you've got mobility, you've got social media. More than half of the world when they access social media sites are on mobile, all right? So you have to fa factor not only mobile into your social media, but into your whole internet presence. And by, by way of example, I don't know, probably about a month and a half ago, Google basically came out and said, if you do not have a mobile friendly website, we're going to ding you and you fall off page one you basically, you know, you're lost because you probably get maybe 10% of the traffic. Right. So now you need to start thinking about mobile and how your website's designed. It impacts search, which means it impacts how people get to you. And then, so getting your content seen is key, right? So it's not just having the, the search ranking, it's where big data comes into play. So when you think about it, it's redefining our mobile strategies, okay? So, you know, you're starting to see you've got mobility, you've got social media, now you've got big data. So for us, it's about knowing your audience. Where do you find your audience? When do you find your audience? There are some recent studies that talk about millennials, and you know, I've got my two girls, <laughs> and first thing they do when they wake up in the morning is they grab their phone. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. Right. You know, folks like you and I that have real jobs, we're probably on LinkedIn from seven to nine, and then we're working. You know, and I don't know that any of us take lunch, and we certainly don't leave work at five o'clock. Right. But you know, so six, seven, eight o'clock. So all of a sudden, if I want to target an audience, that's LinkedIn friendly, I'm going to go from seven to nine. I'm not going to go different times of the day. And then to take it even further, when you think about how people consume content, 50% of every demographics, millennials, senior citizens, us in between, watch videos yep. on mobile devices at least once or twice a week. So you think about that, all of a sudden you start to have all of this knowledge. You know what your demographics are and for us, Think about all of our back-end systems. You know, we've got MRI and all the others, and in these leasing systems, our building systems, we have a wealth of information. We know who our tenants are, we know who our residents are. You know, when you swipe your card into the building, we know you through our security system. So all of that starts to be a lot of, a lot of data. And yeah. as we all know, knowledge is power. Right. So you think about that, and then you start to add that to some of the analytics you get from Google, you get from Facebook, you turn around and everything that we're doing has these little bits and bites of information and we have to start to think about how they all make sense and bring them together. And ironically, so tying this, you know, the convergence of all four together, now we're in the cloud. So we've got our applications in the cloud because all the social media sites are in our cloud, everything's mobile. And what's interesting, and you know, for a long time, and you know, you remember Apple was dead for a long time, they came out with the iPod yeah. and they became relevant again. Well, lo and behold, Microsoft is relevant again. Uh, early May, they had an Ignite conference where they announced their new cloud strategy, which is going to change the way that we work. Um, they've talked about Office 16, Office 365. And so now again, it's when I want it, how I want it, it's all actionable to me. You know, it's funny, when I was down here the other day, I started to talk, think about my presentations, and I decided I need to get out. 
So I'm sitting at one of the restaurants on, you know, the Alamo, you know, the River Walk. Sure. And I take out my mobile device, and I've got Office 365, so I've got PowerPoint on it. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to change my PowerPoint presentation on the fly, no computer, no tablet, no nothing, through my phone, syncs up to the cloud, so I've got it where I want it, download it back to my tablet, I've got it all here, I'm, you know, kind of to show you the nerd that I am. So I'm sitting there, my phone up <laughs> against like the salt and pepper shakers, and I'm advancing the slides with my Apple Watch. So now all of a sudden I've got all these different bits and pieces coming together. Yeah. I mean, I've got applications from my office that sync onto my watch so I can see the notifications. So all of a sudden it's all tying together. And then we haven't even talked about the Internet of Things, which we all know. And they're talking about $17 billion of spend in smart building IoT by 2019. So think about the amount of data that we've got coming in this. We haven't even scratched the surface. Let's take Four World Trade Center by way of example. I walk in and whether I'm a guest or I'm a, a tenant, I swipe my card. Our elevators do not have buttons, so you basically get directed to your elevator. It knows what floor you're going to, so I know who you are. I know some of your demographics. I know what elevator I've put you in. I can now change the digital signage message based on all of those. That, and think about, you know, Disney's great. You walk through with one of the bands at Disney, they know your, your traffic flows, they know your patterns. All of a sudden, I'm again starting to create this wealth of data that as I start to you know, pull it down from the cloud, bring it together, feed it through the mobility, through the Wi-Fi, all of a sudden I really am changing the way I'm doing business. And it's just, it's astronomical just in a year the way things have changed. Interesting. One of my uh, guests you know earlier. Me, I'm from New York, I just can't shut up. Oh, sometimes. no, no. <laughs> I, from Plastark, Marsha, um, she, she was talking about smart building, social buildings. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be what you're talking about. It is, it is absolutely, you know, and it's funny, you have digital signage that you don't even think about, you can change the mood and the ambience of the building, you can announce blood drives, charitable donations, you can tell the message, and think about, as you have Wi-Fi in the building, and you start to monitor, people are going to Google, what are they hitting on Google, you can actually then start to think about tying all this together and truly market a very targeted message to anyone that's in your building, because you've got them as a captive audience in the elevator for 15, 30, 60 seconds, it's amazing. Is anyone really leveraging that yet? Not yet, because I think the problem is, everybody's just starting to try and figure it out. We're first now, from our smart building systems, we're first starting to get to the data. I don't think anybody's really starting to peel away the, the onions, the layers of the onion, to really understand what's going on and how we can really use it to just make things a little bit more user friendly and get our message across. One of my most interesting guests yesterday was from FST Biometrics. They have a, a demo outside, I think you should take a look at it. It's very interesting. What they're doing is they're getting rid of key cards, they're getting rid of swiping yeah. by a, a not just facial but also body movement recognition. Uh, uh, that could be a little scary depending on a lot it, of things. It, it <laughs> could be a little scary, but it yeah. also is a little interesting because look, you're giving that information yeah. You're, you're, you're letting someone scan you in one way or another. We know it's going to go the way of biometrics. Yep. If, if, if the privacy concerns are dealt with, then it makes the whole thing a lot more seamless. And it is at work in some of the major gyms in Canada. People don't yes. have to swipe in anymore. Well, you know, but it's not only the, it's the security aspect of it too. You know, every time we turn around, there's a different data breach. It's confidential information. It's non-confidential information. So, you know, with the internet of things, security is going to become the forefront of every CIO and every company, you know, connecting to a web browser as our systems connect, because if you have one breach, it can be a house of cards. So it's something that we've got to watch out for. Have now. you heard of a, this is a different kind of question, have you heard of a story of a breach recently among anyone you know that's a, like a, a, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that happened? Uh, you know, fortunately, we've been, you know, lucky yeah. in real estate, we have not really seen it. Um, which is, you know, I think as we all said, you know, we've had several security conversations here. It's not a matter of if, it's really a matter of when and, yeah. and what's the magnitude. Um, you know, technology is great. It's enabling us to do so many different things, but the security hasn't caught up. Even when you think about that, the governmental legislation hasn't caught up with technology either. You know, every day you turn around, you're seeing a different thing where there's a court case about you know, what you can actually post on Facebook or not in social media, and you know, how much does freedom of the speech go? It's really still dynamic and it's evolving. And it's, 
we're going to catch up to it eventually. And then, you know, the problem is we don't even know what we don't know a right. year from now. And it's, it, the evolution is continual. What is up next for Sandy Jacklow and for Silverstein? You know, we're starting to, like I said, leverage all this. You know, we were thrilled to announce actually just today uh, we are getting ready to build two World Trade Center. There's been a redesign of the building. Uh, we have Fox News and 21st Century Fox, and we are very excited about that. We're, you know, three World Trade Center is going vertical. It's going to be ready in a couple of years for tenants. And um, just the vision of the World Trade Center being fulfilled by 2020 to have it completely open for us is just such an exciting time for us, aside from all the other things that we're doing. Sandy, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us again uh, this year. My pleasure. It's great to see you, as always. Look forward to catching up next year, and who knows where we're going to be. I think it'll be an interesting place, no matter where it is. So I have to ask you a question. Sure. What's the most interesting thing you've seen other than the biometrics? Um, I think what's... There's a lot of potential this year, whereas in other years we've been excited about adoption, mm -hmm. or we've been excited about uh, key concepts. What, what's emerging now is a potential and the convergence of social and mobile and cloud and data yeah. and personalizing the intimacy of that data where uh, it seems that people are going to use the data in a way that, like you, were, like you were talking about, to provide experiences that are far more personal and combining that with security, yeah. Well, you know, because at the end of the day, it's really about knowing your audience. Right. And it's funny that in a lot of ways, digital made us a lot less personal and the tide has shifted where everybody wants that personal experience where it's really customized. And you want to feel like just because the message is being delivered in a digital fashion, you haven't lost you know, that connection, that bond with somebody. It's really all about that connection. Bran, the, the speaker yeah. today, was saying to me, I didn't see his uh, general session because we were Fabulous here. session. But he said something interesting, that if you take all of the best buildings that have been there, yeah. they all have one thing in common, storytelling. It's a, it is a storytelling about bringing people together, the social, and so it speaks to what you're talking about, how w what we really always crave is being part of something and a part of a group Sense of community. Yeah. So, well, that's what we're talking about this year. Yes, and this is a great community. We're <laughs> here with a lot of great people. Thank you for being a leader in it. Oh, no, thank you. It's always been a pleasure. Right on, Sandy Jackal. Right. Where can they follow you? Um, I'm at Things Sandy, the brand we started a couple of years ago yes. here with, with um, Evan <laughs> Urbania. Yeah. Uh, so it's Think Sandy on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and then obviously just S. Jackalow on LinkedIn. So. I'm pretty easy to find these days. Perfect. Keep up with Sandy, and we'll be back after this.